So down near Len 32 Kansas, this was the location of Precision Tool Company. It's a bit breezy here this morning. Um, this was Precision Tool Company and when the Presleys first moved to Memphis in November of 1948. This is where Vernon Presley first came to work. His brother Vester uh, was already working here. It's quite away from where the Presleys lived in downtown and uh, he wasn't here too long before getting a job at the United Paint Company which was on uh, Concord which was within walking distance of their home on Washington Poplar Avenue. Uh, and when they moved to Lauderdale Courts. Yeah, Vernon worked here from, from the November 48 only until April 49 before he started work at the United Paint Company. In the summer of 1951, when school was out, Elvis uh, got a summer job here at Precision Tool for three months. His main job was operating a, a spindle press and they manufactured rocket shells here, believe it or not. Across the way there on that that section there was the lowest state cinema where Elvis worked. Two occasions, once in 50 and once in 52 in the summer months. He was sacked in 52 though for uh, getting into a fight with another employee. The premiere of Trailer's Rock was held there in 1957. So just off Riverside, running, re running there, this is West Georgia Avenue. Now somewhere along here was the Marl Metal Manufacturing Company. The company that Elvis took a, an evening job um, working a 3 to 11 p.m. shift in September of 1952. So somewhere along here this changed uh, massively this whole area. Now the Georgia, We've got the rain, train tracks from the two stations, Central and Union, further down there, and Georgia, East Georgia Avenue extends beyond that. So the address was Georgia Avenue, so it could have been either side of the tracks. Looking at aerial photos, it's more likely to be this side, although I can't confirm that. But I was worked there briefly uh, from September 52 until Gladys made him give up the job after he fell, he's fallen asleep in classes. Um, teachers raised concerns, he was falling asleep in classes, so he, Gladys forced him to give up the job and she went back to work at St Joseph's Hospital uh, and going back to St Joseph's Hospital took the, the family earnings above that required uh, or permissible for uh, accommodation at the Lauderdale Courts and in November of 52 uh, they received their eviction notice and uh, that's when they left and moved up briefly up to Saffron's, up by Humes High. Just a uh, usual stop here, Humes High School. Elvis attended here from November 1948 when the Presleys arrived in Memphis, started here on the 8th of November, um, right through to the summer of, uh, to his graduation in the summer of 53. He'd, be, he'd worked various part-time jobs while he was still in school at Lowe State Theatre down on Maine, uh, Precision Tool down on Kansas. Uh, but the first job he had when he when he left school here in uh, '53 was actually in N.B. Parker, which is up on Thomas Street. There, um, it was a it was a temporary job. It was about a six-week job, but a highly significant time. Um, while working there because uh, it, it was while he was working at MB Parker that he actually went to, to the Memphis Recording Service to uh, uh, pay his three dollars and ninety-eight cents for uh, to record a demo um, of my happiness and that's when your heartaches begin. And there's a couple of stories here whether it was his, his school friend Ed Leake who lent him the money uh, to make the recording. Peter Garalnik records in his biography, The Last Train to Memphis, that a distraught Elvis managed to persuade his uh, boss at N.B. Parker to give him a, an advance on his wages as he had to make payments for his car. Um, but he also points out that the the family car at the time, an old uh, Lincoln, was uh, fully paid up at that time, so he wouldn't have needed money for that so what did he possibly need the money or want the money to go and make a recording at the Memphis recording service it's 
possible I'd leak lend him the money um, but three three dollars ninety eight I think I had luck and it comes out about thirty five dollars in today's money um, both just having left school possibly maybe just started employment would have would Ed Leak have had as much as thirty five dollars to lend Elvis to just to go and make an actual demo recording of apparently no significance it's true that Ed, the demo actually was left at Ed Leak's house there's a bit of credence to both stories really so uh, but the fact is that Elvis did record that demo while he was at MB Parker Now, after summer of 1953, Elvis uh, attended the Tennessee Employment Office up there on Union Avenue. He specifically asked for a job that would uh, keep him clean, but um, the only thing available for him at the time was to actually come back and start work here full-time here at Precision Tools. So he was back here in September of 1953, just uh, two years after finishing his little summer job here. He actually worked here from September 53 uh, up until March of 1954. So, uh, of course, during that time, during the time he was working here at Precision Tool, he recorded his second demo at Sun in January of 54. Of, uh, I'll never stand in your way and it wouldn't be the same without you. He meets Dixie Lock for the first time and they start their 18 uh, month relationship. His first really serious girlfriend. But by March 54, Elvis had had enough of working here and uh, left here. And a month later, started at Crown Electric as his, as uh, a truck driver. This building probably is surviving section from that uh, from the time Elvis worked here in the 50s. There was another part of the building here that was. Uh, Partially destroyed in a, an explosion in 1959, where it set off set off the ammunition and uh, destroyed the building. It was rebuilt, but in 1963 there was another explosion. It was another explosion where 15 people were seriously hurt. So uh, not not a great track record here, but uh, this part of the building certainly seems to be the original from the 50s. In April 1954, Elvis went to work for the Crown Electric Company. Although the popular belief is that Crown Electric was down on Poplar Avenue. Um, it didn't actually move to that premises until 1956, uh, long after Elvis had finished working there. This was the address of Crown Electric on Dunlap Street, North Dunlap. Um, so it's more likely that in this location, not this probably not this building itself but in this location was where Crown Electric was and where Elvis worked from April 1954 until he uh, he packed it in in uh, November of 54 to concentrate full time on his music career which was uh, gaining speed by that time. Mr Jim Tipler and his wife Gladys Tipler who owned Crown Electric were big supporters of Elvis um, going out to the Bon Air Club Elvis's uh, first unofficial, uh, more impromptu appearance in between a Starlight Wranglers regular set at the Bon Air. They supported him a lot in his early career the, those first few months and Elvis invited them out to his Vegas opening in uh, August 1969 uh, where he's the, on one of the recordings that was made there he uh, introduces them from the stage. So that was the location of Crumlin.